It is a humid afternoon, sticky with oppressive heat. In the undergrowth of the late Cretaceous forest, very little stirs. The ubiquitous hum of insects is broken only by the swish and gurgle of a river winding its way along a muddy riverbank. The pack of Utah raptors, five of them in total, lay napping amongst a grove of towering ostrich ferns. Every now and then, they stretch and flutter their feathered forearms, fanning themselves to cool off. Like all theropods, Utah raptors are warm-blooded. And because Utah raptor is large for a dromaeosaur and is covered with feathers, heat can sometimes be an issue for them. That's why the pack has decided it's nap time, even though they're quite hungry. It has been several days since they took down the old Pachyrhinosaurus. Suddenly, one of the Utah raptors, an older female who is the mother of two of the pack members, raises her head, smelling something on the wind. Formidable predators, Utah raptors have a hyper-keen sense of smell. After a moment, she hears something as well, the sound of something very large moving in the river nearby. Her instincts tell her that the sound, a subtle splash and gurgle, is coming from somewhere upwind of where they are. This means that they can smell it, but it cannot smell them. She rises slowly to her feet, making almost no sound. Around her, her pack mates stir. They sense the same presence, and they rise swiftly and silently to their feet. Like shadows, they creep forwards out of the fern grove and towards the river. 200 meters upstream, the Spinosaurus is making his slow and ponderous way along the riverbed. He moves in a crouch, his snout and clawed hands held close to the surface of the water, his huge crocodile-like tail adjusting for balance. He is desperately hungry and is searching for fish or other edible aquatic life. The injury to his side he incurred after the encounter with the Lusotitan has left him weakened and clumsy. He hasn't been able to catch many fish, and this is a problem for an animal that must eat constantly to stay alive. His senses dimmed with hunger. He doesn't register that the Utah Raptor pack is there until they are upon him. Two of the younger animals make a flying leap and land on the Spinosaurus back, using the sickle claws on their feet to gain purchase on the scaly skin. The Spinosaurus bellows and pivots to the side, trying to shake them off. The sail on his back buffets one of the Utah raptors, sending it sprawling eight meters to the muddy riverbank. The Spinosaurus swings its mighty head, long jaws snapping at the second Utah raptor. He tries to dislodge the smaller dinosaur from where it clings to his flank, but the Utah raptor holds on with grim determination. The Spinosaurus screams in pain when the Utah raptor slashes at his barely healed injury, but the adrenaline gives the larger dinosaur an extra burst of strength, and he manages to finally dislodge his assailant. The Spinosaurus, breathing hard, blinks as it straightens up. Then, he freezes. Staring back at him from the riverbank, surrounding him, are three more Utah raptors. The two he'd managed to dislodge move in behind them in formation. The feathers along their flanks and backs and heads are raised. They make a low, hissing sound in their throats. The attack is swift and relentless. The pack move faster than the Spinosaurus could have thought possible. The Utahraptors are suddenly everywhere, tearing at his back and neck and flanks. The Spinosaurus staggers and falls sideways into the shallow river, nearly crushing one of the Utah Raptors beneath him. He struggles to rise to defend himself, but the Dromaeosaurs are already slashing at his belly and neck with grim efficiency. The river next to the Spinosaurus' head begins to run red with blood, and his vision goes black. Utah Raptor wins.